students welcome to the another class of basic science today i am discussing the rest of the chapter caskets of life we know that our body is made up of different organs so let's consider an organism an organism is made up of different organs then the organs are made up of tissues again the tissues are made up of cells so we can say that cells are the basic units of life the cells join together to form tissues the tissues join together to form organs the organs join together to form an organism so let's consider a single cell then the cells join together to form a tissue again the tissues join together to form an organ the organs are joined together to form an organism this is the order so we can compare the cells with a brick for that just consider a house that a house is made up of floorings walls rooms etc and if we break a wall what you can see you can observe so many bricks when we break the walls of a building we can see bricks so we can say that bricks are the basic units of a building similarly here in the case of living things cells are the basic units of life the cells join together to form tissues tissues join together to form organs and again become an organism this is the comparison between a building and a organism on the basis of bricks and cells when we compare a brick with a cell brick is only the raw material for a building it is not alive and but the cells are our active units the bricks give the structure to the building but the cells provide the structure and also it is a functional unit each and every cell in an organism is a active unit it means that if the cells are not function properly the organism cannot be survive that is the basic difference between the cell and brick bricks give only structure to the building it have no function but cell provide the structure and functional it act as functional unit without the cell there will be no living organism this is about the comparison between cells and bricks that is why we are calling the cell as the basic structural and functional units of our life now let us discuss about the shapes of cells we can observe cells with different shapes it may be in oval shape or in round shape or in biconcave shape or shaped like this these are some examples of 
different shapes of cells in our body also we can see these type of cells for example our cheek cell muscle cell neuron white blood cell and red blood cell these are certain examples for cells with different shape now let us discuss about the size of cell size of the cell is not depending upon the size of an organism we cannot say the size of cell of an elephant is bigger than that of a cat the size of an organism is mainly depending upon the number of cells present in that organism as the number of cells increases the size of an organism also increases so the size only depending upon the number of cells present in that organism as the number of cell increases the size of organism also increases now let us discuss about the parts of cell for that first i am considering an animal cell the animal cell is surrounded by a membrane the outer covering of this animal cell is called cell membrane the animal cell have an outer covering which is called cell membrane and inside the cell membrane there is a jelly like material and the matrix film inside the cell membrane is called cytoplasm the matrix filled inside the cell membrane is called cytoplasm again there is a center part this center part is called nucleus the center part of the cell which is called nucleus and here we can see other parts like this these are vacuoles these are the part important parts of an animal cell here the outer covering is called cell membrane then you can observe a nucleus which is the center part or center of the cell then inside the cell membrane a matrix is filled this is a jelly like material in that material all other parts are floating so such material is called cytoplasm in that cytoplasm all other parts are floating inside the cell then we have small vacuoles this is the some of the important parts of an animal cell so once again i will repeat for an animal cell we can see the center part which is nucleus then small vacuoles and the outer covering that is a cell membrane and the matrix filled inside the cell membrane that is called cytoplasm again we can move to the plant cell spread plant cell when we are drawing the figure of a plant cell we have a cell membrane the outer covering is cell membrane but under that the cell membrane we can see one more protective covering outside the cell membrane we have one more protective covering this is called our cell wall and this is our cell membrane so 
For a plant cell, we have cell wall and cell membrane. Or the outer protective covering is cell wall. Then inside cell wall we have cell membrane. And inside cell membrane we have the matrix filled inside the cell membrane that is cytoplasm. And we can also say nucleus. Then here we can observe a large vacuole. We can observe a large vacuole. The vacuoles generally stores fat, lipids, etc. So uh, while, when we are considering with the when we are comparing with animal cell, here the size of the vacuole is large and here in plant cell we can also see green color small parts they are chloroplast chloroplast observe only in plant cells the chloroplasts are known as the food factories of the plant so these are the some of the parts of plant cell. The outer covering is cell wall. Then is, that is a protective layer. Inside that cell wall we have cell membrane. Then the matrix filled inside the plant cell which is cytoplasm. Then center, center of the cell that is our nucleus. Then we have a large vacuole and we can also see chloroplast. These are the important parts of plant cell. Then when we are comparing an animal cell and plant cell, we can observe cell wall and chloroplast only in plant cell. But in animal cell, we have cell membrane, cytoplasm, nucleus and vacuum. That there we cannot observe cell wall and chloroplast. So, Cell membrane, cytoplasm, nucleus, vacuole are observed in both animal cell and plant cell. But in plant cell, we can see cell wall and chloroplast. Then the size of vacuole is small in animal cell and the size of vacuole is large in plant cell. This is the main comparison between animal cell and plant cell. We have discussed about cells, their shape, size and the number of cells present in the organism and the parts of cell, the parts of animal cell and plant cell. Hope all of you understand this and go through your textbooks and follow this class. These are the topics we have to discuss in this chapter, Caskets of Life. Thank you.